Hello! Welcome to the Aquatax Hour me, with me, Long Steve, on the Thursday the 23rd of March at 3pm or 3.01pm as my clock says. Right, today I am going to carry on with the uh, bit of refactoring that I did. Oh, actually, I've already done a bit of refactoring um, and I'll show you that. I won't do it on the stream um, just because it was rather boring, uh, but I will go through it briefly uh, while I start here and there's nobody else watching. Um, also, my hat's not working today. I took my hat out off well, online. No, no offline? Remote, yes. I took my hat out to a meeting yesterday evening um, and I used my... Um, uh, I tried to use the Wi-Fi of my mobile phone and also power it using a USB power pack, um, but it didn't work remotely. I brought it back home yesterday evening. It definitely worked yesterday evening when I got it home, um, but now it's no longer working, so I've, I have it unplugged. I'm wearing it though, just so I look like I'm doing something. <laughs> uh, apologies for the hat not, not working there. So where was I? Right. I'm going to fire up Slick Edit. I, in fact, I might comment on that today. The hat isn't working today. Right. Okay. Oh, and I need my gulp task running. Gulp serve. I need Chrome. Hopefully, it won't be too noisy today with some building work going on in the background. My next door neighbors are having a, a garden room or a shed um, built. And there's been quite a lot of banging going on, but I think they've pretty much finished now. They've done the roof, got everything done, so there might just be some background noise. Hopefully not too much more banging. Uh, right, so where did I get to? So I had managed to implement my uh, flood fill routines, which are triggered every time a block lands. And whenever a block lands, the routine goes through the entire grid data structure and creates a number of blocks. This is block objects. So that's a block object falling down there. Um, but what it does is it creates a set of blocks from the data in the grid that correspond to matching colored areas. So it, what basically happens is when a block lands from one color uh, and attaches itself to an exist block of an exi the existing color that's already in the grid, it merges together. As you can see, the outline fills the, um, the entire colored area there. There aren't two outlines or multiple outlines in, in in between. I'm also just going to shut down Dropbox on my PC here because it's been uh, popping up. That'll annoy me. And as you can see, there's a count of how many blocks there are. One, two, three, four, five, six. As soon as this one lands, it'll be seven. Uh, when this one lands, it'll remain seven because this large area all becomes one block. Uh, remain seven now. If I slot this one down in the bottom here, that'll merge and remain seven. Can slot that one there, that one there. See lots of um, lots of scope for creating nice towers and things. In fact, I might pop that one in. Oh, I fell it there by mistake. Anyway, that's all good. It's working. So what I had actually done at the end of last stream on Tuesday evening, I think it was, was I'd left it a bit, a bit ragged. The code wasn't great, um, and I had actually left the block, and what I'm going to do is remind myself, because I did a bit of refactoring, then I committed it to a local uh, copy of the branch. Um, I double click that. Here we are, right. So, where I had block, I had some code originally, as of Tuesday, where I had the constructor, and I'd written a function called create tile node from data, and that was called from the grid flood fill at the bottom. Actually, I think it was part of the render method in here somewhere. Um, create block from tile data group. Oh, that's a self function. That's this one. Uh, maybe it was about it was about here somewhere. Anyway. Um, in fact, I can have a look. So down the bottom here. Uh, 
there it is create block outline so it's make tile data from group and then it creates a block outline basically it was working on nodes so it was just creating tile data from the group but what I've done now is I have changed the constructor of my block so that it can either be passed a tile num which is one of the predefined tiles that is in the function uh, in the class here so we've got tile 0 through to tile 7 is it yes so it can either be passed that and then n nothing else or it can be passed minus 1 as the tile num and then the actual data for the, the tile so it could be passed here this block of data or what happens now is within my grid function my method called create block from tile data group <laughs> um, and the tile data the tile groups are what are created by the flood fill it makes up a tile object which references the um, the data from the grid uh, and I refactored that a little bit as well. I added in another function uh, somewhere. Oh, no, actually, it was the flood fill I refactored. Anyway, so after the flood fill has created an array of fill groups, those fill groups are then converted into a block by this function here. Each one of those is created into is turned into a block. So then there's a, a set of blocks that correspond to each group within the grid. Let's reset that. A group being uh, effectively an uh, odd shaped block made of fallen blocks of the same color combined, like this. So these aren't individual blocks that have landed, they're actually now separated out and generated by the function inside grid. But the same code is used to draw the outline and make them from the tile data. And inside my block constructor, it checks whether or not the tile num you've passed in is minus one and you've passed in some tile data in which case it sets the tile data and then just creates one draw node at the normal unrotated orientation um, because these nodes are never going to be rotated by the player they're always just going to drop straight down uh, otherwise if you pass in as one of the predefined tiles it uses the tile data out of the uh, uppercase tile data array and then rotates them four times to create the nodes that it uses for drawing. And that's the nodes that are, you see, fallen down here and the four rotations. Anyway, that's all great. I'm quite happy with that. Um, the function is pretty much the same. And then inside grid, um, all I really did after last week was just slightly refactor group flood fill. There was a block of code which was duplicated twice and I made it into a function called fill outwards, which basically performs the flood fill in all four directions from a particular cell in the grid um, where appropriate and using the direction that the flood fill has come from when entering a cell to not go back that way. That way it will flood the entire grid um, in all directions. As it goes, it tests to see whether or not there's a, uh, a square, a solid square cell. Um, and if it is, it adds that to the group. Or if there's triangles, it does a, a loop through twice, once for each triangle position within a cell. Uh, so there's, each cell is divided up into two kind of subcells where the triangles can sit. Um, checks the appropriate triangle for filling in that direction, and then pop puts it into the group, and then fills outwards again um, from those appropriate directions. And here's the loop at the bottom which starts it all off. Um, and this happens every time a block lands in the grid. So it, what happens when a block lands in the grid is the entire set of blocks that are currently rendered to make up these ones that have landed and are stationary is cleared and then rebuilt using the flood fill function. So there's clearly some scope for optimization in the future there, but I'm not going to worry about that yet. I'm going to optimize later on uh, if I need to. Um, you can't see it happening at the moment, and if I get... I, can probably get to significantly large numbers of blocks in the grid uh, before I need to worry about it even actually impacting performance. Um, but I will, well, I will optimize it at some point, probably just for good measure. So 
let's just double check I'm streaming. Uh, I should be online. Yep, I think I am. Going to just check the live edu projects. Uh, yep, I'm streaming. Good, excellent. You never know. It might just be that nobody's interested today. <laughs> it seems a bit quiet. Um, but there might also be people watching who haven't joined the chat room as well. Uh, I, often, I often forget that. I sometimes think there's nobody around, but actually people do watch the stream on the Live Edu site without actually signing in, which is fine. So, that's been a bit of refactoring, which uh, you can have a look at if you look at the, the Git history, once I've committed it at the end of the stream today. And now I've got to figure out what to do next. Um, my plan, I think, is I've got two options. One is to have a look at a bug which has been hanging around for a while, which is related to, let me open up my refactor, which is related to sliding. Um, and it seems to cause some interesting glitches when sliding. You get stuttering as a block slides down a large slope. Um, I won't I won't try and reproduce it now. It might just happen if I do this. If I make this fast drop, yeah, there you go. It sort of stuttered twice there. Um, but I'm not going to worry about that today, I think. I'm going to go straight in and look at the um, stack collapse uh, or the block, block breaking first, which will lead on to stack collapse. Um, so breaking blocks. The idea is that when a pointy block, like this one here with the pink pointy arrow at the bottom, or pointy triangle, lands on a flat surface, it will break all of that connected block there and itself. And this one, so if I landed this one, then the pink block and the falling blue block would break and shatter. Um, and this, this one could shatter the purple blocks like that. So a, a falling block, when it triggers a break, is itself destroyed and also the blocks connected to where it lands of the same color. Uh, obviously when a square block lands nothing happens, they don't cause breaks, it's only pointy blocks, and it's only pointy blocks that are sharp points like that, I think. Or am I, no, maybe I'm wrong actually, maybe um, I can probably choose to implement this as I like, um, but if I find one of my triangular blocks that had a little orange triangles that are made up of two two triangles. I'm not going to get one, am I? It's tile number seven, I think. Ah, oh, there it is. Oh, oh. And there's another one. <laughs> two in one go. So this one would shatter this purple block if it landed that way. It would also do it if it landed that way. If it landed that way, it would slide off. If it landed that way, it, it doesn't land that way. It goes straight past. My question is, does it shatter with a point like that? And I think it does, because that's effectively either one of those pointy triangles landing on something. Oh, now we've got three of them in a row. So if I landed that on there, it should break itself and the purple block. So that's what I'm going to implement. Um, I probably won't finish it today, um, but that's a start. So, I know I had a brief look a second ago, and I've got some I've got some comments here that's relevant to block breaking. Uh, right, so we're in the bottom of game.js, and uh, ooh, someone just joined. Hi, E. Garcia. Good to see you. Uh, I'm just about to have a look at breaking of blocks or breaking of bits of my stack. Um, here we are. Let's just do this again. So block breaking occurs when a pointy block lands on a on a flat piece like that. Uh, so if that pointy triangle lands on this red one, they will both break. And larger, uh, larger groups of blocks merged together will all break as well. So if I join that one up with that one and that one there, if I drop this point on this red bit, that all the, the whole lot will break away and basically sh shatter. And I'm just looking at some comments that I made a while ago. There's like a handle the block breaking bit here. So obviously something's got to happen at this point. Otherwise, the only case here is that the slide code determined that it actually couldn't slide the block. 
This could be because it's stuck in place between two slopes or that this is a point collision which should cause a break. So this is right at the bottom of my game function for handling the block movement. Um, handle block movement. It gets to the bottom here and it decides if the block is sliding, it does a bunch of sliding stuff. Otherwise there's a collision. If it's a slope collision, it could trigger a slide or it might trigger a break. So I've got to look at block, a break block. And it's empty, but this is probably where I have to implement. Um, <coughs> so test for uh, the appropriate block or um, stack breaking scenario. And how do I do that? Slide block report this okay I, I'm pretty I was just about to look for the points where the collisions actually occur um, just gonna cough as well mute myself while I do that right apologies for the hat not working today as well um, <laughs> yes how many lines of code is it uh, I can't actually count the lines of code. If I do view uh, line numbers, there we go, 1093. Yes, quite a large block. Uh, how many lines of code are there? 2009. Oh, actually, so it's almost half the project. It's grid.js. Well, that's pretty much all the thing is at the moment, isn't it? It's just a grid <laughs> and things happening in the grid. Anyway. Um, I was going to look at block break, wherever it's gone. Uh, why don't you split it into functions? Well, it is split into functions. I have insert block into grid, um, render field cells. So that, that there are lots of functions. These are this is actually a block, sorry, a grid class, and there are variables, sorry, um, members. And then there's a constructor update function and lots of other ones. Um, basically, the grid does a lot of things at the moment. Um, I'll worry about splitting it up if it comes to be too big to manage. Um, lines, create block nodes, all sorts of stuff going on here. Um, you, you tend to get that w with games. You'll find that uh, you know you you have a lot of logic and functionality in in the, in the same place. Um, and actually splitting it all up into multiple files just makes it more difficult to manage. Um, you just have to be able to cope with it in your head all at once. <laughs> uh, anyway, where was I? I was going to look at break, break block. That's a very, very awkward thing to say. Um, and what I was doing was inside the block, when a collision occurs, it actually reports it in a, um, a member called collision points. So I'm going to have a look at that. Let's just put something in here for looping over it. Um, block dot collision points. Actually, let's do. There might not be any. For now, I'll just dump something out on the screen. Um, what's in CP? We've got collision. That will be the the flag as to whether or not it's a axis or a slope collision. The position, the actual object data. OK, I could just probably cheat where is it there so with any luck when a block lands it should spew some console logging out um, um, doesn't do it when it lands on the ground what about with a point down no, 
Okay, let's try that one. Nope. Ah, there's one. Collision point, cell tile, X and Y. Collision grid pos, X and Y, grid pos object 19. Okay. Aha. Uh -huh. Why did that not do it earlier? I'm expecting to see at least one entry per point that lands on the um, on another one. There it is. Okay. So what I need to do is translate that into something that determines whether or not a break should occur. So that's basically I'm going to need to figure out where the um, where the actual point is. Hopefully using grid block pos. 300 zero grid block obj of three so that's going to be the point of the triangle isn't it so a three would be I mean, one of those point down triangles then it doesn't seem to have the actual index I'd rather have the grid index let's um let's just augment to my collision function so it's got pause which is x and y I want the index as well. Here it is, grid index. Grid block index. Ooh. I control C, not control V. There it is. Index, index, and C dot grid pause index. Ah, grid block index. Right. Oh, and that didn't trigger a. Uh, a call to the function. Well, what does that do? No, that doesn't either. That one does. That's annoying. Um. Let's just have a look at that, because I want to see that my code is going to work. I need to force a block. Let's just do a force of zero and see if it does it. So that worked OK. What about if I do force block of one? Is, that, is one the blue one? I can never remember. No, I want zero, one, two. It's going to be the last one I try. Nope. I'm hitting Alt V by mistake when I want to hit Alt C to shift shift to Chrome. There we go. That's the block I wanted. So also I want the first block to be um. So new block zero. I know what I could do. Um, let's do. Fixed test block, fixed first block. Right, <laughs> finally, after all that, I'm now going to get the sequence of blocks I desire, which is this, and nothing happens when it lands. Okay, let's see what it's doing. It should collide and trigger a bit of logic here. So we're in um, view. Line numbers 365 of block dot uh, game dot js. Ooh. Set visibility of undefined. Might be some bugs uh, left around. Um, so 375. Stick block. Ooh. 
Ooh, why did that not land at that point there then? It's going to break every time, isn't it? Right. Um, it's possibly there. Right. Here we go. Block going to land. Breakpoint triggered. Right. Slide can move left or can move right is false, which is fine. So it does. It hit, goes into... Ah, but of course, if can move left or right is false, I think self dot block it immediately bails out and never ends up calling any of the collision routines, does it? Let's see. I mean, I, my guess is that there is no collision points on the block. Yes, it's null. Okay, that's interesting. There must be at least one there. So why is it not triggering can move left or can move right? So that's left... Is that a side effect? Oh, that's interesting. This is something that's actually used inside. Yeah, here we go. So it's actually, we've called slide block, and that's called collide block. Collide block is what should have come down into collide block. With, uh, it's only collide block with grid data, which actually sets this collision points. Let's see if that's actually cool on the way down. Collision points. Yeah, so it's collide block with grid data that I kind of want to look at as well. Let's see. Grid. Okay, so this is called every frame out of handle block movement, yeah. I wonder if that is worth putting a breakpoint in. And my suspicion is that's not actually triggered. Oh, it is. So it's definitely triggered. Um, collision points. Zero collision or equals cell collision is 512. Um, I can't remember which one 512 is. I think that's probably uh, be 256 when it eight nine. Yeah, so it's definitely slope collision. So that's definitely put something in there. So it gets down to here. Collision points dot length is greater than zero. Yes, block dot collision points. Okay, so that's fine. So what happens to block dot collision points by the time it gets down into here then? And is it the same block? Should be. It's difficult to tell. Instance ID eleven fifty one. Okay, let's let's jump on. We're in here. So the collision has occurred. It can move left or can move right is false, so it doesn't. So it's self dot block, yeah. Instance ID eleven fifty one comes down into here, and block dot collision points is null. Okay. So what what happened to block dot collision points? What did I miss? Um, let's do a search on. Collision points. So in game.js, loop over it a number of times doing some. Oh, what's that then? Ah, hi oh, highlight collision. 
self dot oh hang on a minute so we've got oh no that's collision points camel case not collision underscore points with the block okay um so that's all right i'm not resetting it anywhere the only point it gets set to null is here so where's this so I, I'm going to put a breakpoint in there and see what happens. Because um, that looks like the only point it's set to null if there are no collisions. So let's put one in there and in there. Refresh this. Okay, so it might be doing it every frame. Right. If it breaks at this point now, I'm going to put block there. So it definitely bails out of that. We're in down into here. Self dot highlight collision. Self dot. Oh, let's do a watch statement on self dot block dot collision points. Not col, C O L I S I O N points. Okay, so it's one at the moment. Highlight collision. It's still one. If it's sliding is no. Collision is true. Collision is slope collision. Yep. So now we got self dot grid dot slide block. Self dot block. Ah, that's slide block, isn't it? So let's see what happens in here. Does this reset it in some way? Or so it does. Oh, interestingly, it does call self dot collide block. Ah, moving down to the right or down to the left. I see. So self dot collide block is going to reset that block collision point, isn't it? In fact, it has down into the right, but then it'll test down into the left, <laughs> and there'll be none in there, I think. So now it comes to the test down to the left, and after this point, so that one worked at the half position and then the second time through it says it's null right so testing down and to the left what i need to do is make a function call to not actually overwrite those in the scenarios that i'm doing testing for collision and not actually you know, testing speculatively for a collision within a different place okay so this is this is more involved than I expected it to be actually finding this bug, but um, it's all good, good work. Uh, so what I need to be able to do is basically say don't report the collisions in the scenario where I'm doing this slide testing. So what is slide testing? Slide block calls collide block, collide block calls collide block with grid bound and grid data. So what I need to do is I could do two things. I could either, in this instance, not. I could take take a copy of collision points and reset them afterwards, or I could pass in a flag that says "don't um, don't report collisions." So let's do that. Um, report. So what am I going to call it? It's basically it's reporting it against the block, isn't it? Um, I could set a flag in the block itself and then that might be the best way of doing it so if we do because I'm rather than passing it through all the functions as parameters I might as well just set a bit on the block that says don't report collisions so let's um let's do that slide block yeah block 
dot. So this this is actually I should probably comment this a bit better. Uh, test to see if the block can slide in either the left or the right directions. Uh, let's see. Used speculatively, uh, speculatively, in order to trigger a slide. So, um, disable block collision reporting. I'm just going to do block dot uh, collision Yeah, I don't like the idea of that. I'm going to actually put something in collision reporting enabled equal false because that's kind of ex um, what we want is collision reporting enabled true or false within the block, don't we? Um, and I should be at least a little careful about protecting the values of the variables. So uh, should collision data be recorded um, for this block. Collision, what did I call it? Collision reporting, true or false. Collision reporting enabled, mm, that'll be okay, yeah. And I'll set it to true by default. And then I'll have a function which enables or disables it. So um, let's just put that down here somewhere. Uh, set new rotation and position. I could make it into a getter and setter, couldn't I? Um, haven't yet figured out how to do that though. So I will just do uh, is self dot collision reporting enabled equal enabled and then get I should call that is collision reporting enabled, shouldn't I? Is collision reporting enabled? There we go. But then that should be called <laughs> enable collision reporting or set collision reporting enabled. <laughs> yeah, that'll do. So we want to do s is collision reporting enabled. Oh, hi, USB shanks. Good to see you. Uh, where am I going to? So block dot set collision reporting enabled false. Oh, I keep getting um, uh, error messages from my chatbot, Tim, uh, whenever it tries to welcome somebody into the room. Hi, Felix22, by flashing my hat. Uh, unfortunately, the hat's not working at the moment. Um, I'm looking at the error log, and it keeps popping up saying, error 400, calling the hat function. Maybe it's offline. Well, it is, because I'm wearing it, but it's not plugged in. Um, I seem to have broken it the other day somehow. Uh, don't know why. It just um, stopped working. I won't connect to the Wi-Fi. Anyway. Set block collision reporting enabled, false, and then set collision reporting enabled, true. And then in here, I want to do if no collision and um, block dot is collision reporting enabled. Oops, somebody else just joined. And I totally didn't do it. Oh, I think it was live video support. Hi. Uh, so now, what's going to happen is the. What I actually want to do is also do nothing if. Uh, <laughs> I'm doing well, thanks. Good, thanks for asking. And uh, oh, uh, Adida as well. Good to see you. Uh, I'm going to put that in here, don't I? If block 
dot collision reporting enabled do those things there pretty sure that should now stop the error messages and the fact that it wasn't reporting a collision at this particular point when the block lands oh now it's also crashing uh, what did I do cannot read render command of undefined Ooh, okay what's going on there then Ah, oh, now it's working. Maybe I refreshed it a bit quickly. Right, let's look at the console. So when this lands, it should now spew out something. Oh, uh, trigger my breakpoint. Actually, let's just jump through and see. Self dot breaking, break block, and my watch statement. Self dot collision. Uh, self dot block dot collision points. I want block dot collision points, but um. Ah, it, it, there is something there. Good. So it's actually going to do it. Right. And it did. It spewed it out. Right. So let's put something a bit more useful out in that cc.log so I know what's going on. Oh, hi, Timmy359. Good to see you. 342 today. You are, you arrived a little early. You should have arrived at 359. <laughs> it's only 342 or 343. Uh, right. Let's just do collision point cp dot um grid block index that's what i want to see grid block index it's going to be something like zero one two three four five maybe uh, five, yes, perfect. Okay. I mean, it should also trigger something when it lands on the ground, but it's not at the moment. I'll fix that another day. Uh, let's do let's do one right there. Just see if this gives me zero or one. Gives me point zero. Good. Okay. Point two, zero, one, and two. Right. I'm just making sure that my collision report when a point lands on a flat bit is accurate. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yep. Because what I want to do is check the um, the grid, the the triangle data around that point of collision to see whether or not a break should occur. Let's, um, let's go back to fix test block minus one. Uh, the first block that falls at the beginning. Point one, zero one, yep. Now, ooh, I wonder if this one's going to collide. If I do that, it might give me two actually. It does. 28 and 29. Um, which I think is there and there, so it's re registered each of those pointing down, which is exactly what I wanted to do, which is good. That one has registered a two, zero, one, two, yep. Okay, that one's going to register some number, 31, 28, 29, 30, 31, yep. 31, sorry, I'm, my enunciation is a little bit sloppy. Um, Let's do something like that. Ah, I wonder what's going to happen if I land a flat onto a point. So that's a collision point 21. So 0, I think it's 13, that's 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21. Yeah, that's correct. Excellent. Um, if I do that, it should slide and then slide again and not report any collision. Nope. Good. Uh, let's try a another flat on a point, 78. Excellent. Now, I wonder if I have a, a point, two points. Now, if I land this one on, 78 is currently what, the one there, and it's got 12 and 13. Yeah, great. So I'm getting definitely getting some reports of collisions. So now I've just got to act on them. 
I say me in the first person, or I've got to act on them in the first person, I mean I've got to write the code to do it. I've always been like that. I always uh, refer to code that I've written in the first person. Um, and I think a lot of programmers do. When when you talk to other programmers, they'll talk about their code, and they'll use we and I and um, personal pronouns and things. Um, I'm I'm doing this, or you know, rather than the, you use rather less words actually that way, don't you? When when you say if if you have to say all the time, my code implements this, or my code do, you know, my my code generates the the grid, you know, you add lots of extra words. Whereas if you're talking and you say I generate the grid and do this, it's implied that it's your code that does it. It's not actually you generating the grid. Um, never thought about it very much actually, but it's an interesting interesting thing uh, how you refer to your code. Um, right, where was I? I'm going to look in break block, which is in grid. So, don't need that anymore. Test for the appropriate stack breaking scenario. Now, what I want to do is my do I just want to I think at the moment what I want to do Let's just check this off. I get two points. Yes, it looks like all I have to do is check each collision point cell and the one above it. Um, and if the if the points are lined up with flat bits correctly, then it should break, shouldn't it? So we'll give that a go. So for each of these points, um, test. Let's do this. So for each point in the grid test the tr the um, the point the collision point with the the so it's at this point the falling block isn't actually in the grid so i have to actually pull the data for that out of the the block that's passed in um, now that might be interesting, uh, but we we'll think we can do that. For each point in the grid, test the collision point with the cell, I'm going to call it cell triangle, uh, of the block falling. But I've got to figure out which one that actually is. So let's, let's start with the grid. That's the easy one. So grid block index. Um, and we, in fact, I think the collision has the the grid block object already in there yes so grid block obj is the did the actual cell from the grid uh, the game grid so collision point uh, grid I'm going to log this as grid collision point and uh, what do I call it um, grid data Grid block uh, uh, cp dot grid block obj. So there's that. And let's put a breakpoint in there and investigate the rest of the data that's in that collision point. I kind of want to, to force my blocks again, don't I? Zero. Now, what number was it? Was it seven or six? Yeah, six. And I'm going to put it relatively near the, the the zero point so the numbers aren't too high. Can I hit the breakpoint before it lands? Yes. Right. Jump in, F eleven. Um so it's locked out collision point zero grid data three. So the grid data refers to that little tiny pointy red triangle which is Shrink that. Give myself. An, I'm going to need to refer to my triangles, so I like to pop open my file down here. Triangle type three. Yep, perfect. And the the CP at this point. So we've got grid block obj, and then we've got the grid block pause, that's actually the position, although it's the bottom left of the cell where the collision occurred, so it's not terribly useful. It's the cell 
quintile cell 3 and x and y 1 0 I think that's the index into the blocks uh, grid data and in fact it tells me the um, tells me this tile cell which is a triangle 3 as well so it's a triangle 3 landed on top of a triangle 3 that's actually all I need I, I don't need to know where it is I just need to know that it's tile cell 3 and I'm testing it against tile cell 3 perfect right so um, collision point uh, block triangle data in fact I'm going to call that triangle and I know that this break block function only ever gets called when the logic has decided that it's um, got a slope collision but it's not actually going to slide so that means it can only have a triangle in there it, it, this never gets called at the point where a axis collision occurs and an axis collision is when two flat bits um, vertical or horizontal well actually only horizontal flat bits occur um, because that's a different type of collision so block triangle data is cp dot now what is it cp dot cell dot tile cell so um, let's do Uh, grid cell grid cell equals that um, block cell equal I'm actually I'm going to call it triangle because I know there's only one triangle although actually no, I don't um, one of them will have one triangle in <laughs> potentially the other cell could be a solid one um, in fact I might tweak that a bit different better so actually I'm going to call it grid I'm still going to call it a cell and block cell. And that's going to be this one. Right, and now we've got a bunch of if statements. Um, so one of them could be square. And I have a function down here that determines whether or not it's square. And I'm going to copy and paste this for the third time, I think, now. <laughs> so we should probably decide to put this somewhere else. Uh, in fact, let's do that now. Let's not be lazy. I've got utils somewhere, but I uh, globals aq dot draw triangle. Yeah, let's do this. Let's do aq dot is square cell, and uh, Determine if a grid cell, either from a block or within the grid, is a s solid square. Let me that parameter C, the grid cell data value. Okay, returns true or false. True. If the cell is a solid square and not a single triangle, actually a solid square made of two triangles and not a single triangle, right? So is so where do I use uh, var square equals? I least yeah I've got it twice, so I can get rid of that and do aq dot is square cell now if I search for square um, actually let's replace it the other place as well I think it's only used once in this function actually. Yeah, there. S 
square. No, that's not there. Square without the space. Uh, oh, that's finding it in all of the maths libraries, but not in my own code. So actually, I think that's okay. A few references to the, uh, the variable or name or the compound function square, but I think we're okay. Right. Now, where was I? I was going to test if or not there was a square cell in my break block function, wasn't there? Here we are, right. So, if is aq dot is square cell, that's what I called it. Yep. Grid cell. Um, so if the grid cell is square, just had a thought actually. I'm wondering if testing or not testing the triangle types is in is in any way. Ah, yes, I think. There might be a um, there might be a reason for this. Uh, let me just I'm just going to check something out. So I'm thinking to myself I don't need to do this testing, but actually I do because there is a point where you can get slope collisions without sliding where the breaks shouldn't occur, and that's an interesting one. It happens when a block lands like that and nestles nicely into a space. Um, so uh, that was landing on the ground. Uh, what I need to do is put one. Let's um, see if I can build up the appropriate slot. There we go. Oh no, that's not going to work. Um, see that one should break. If I do that, it should trigger my breakpoint. Yep, and also print out the uh, triangulator. Um, I shall just go back to normal blocks uh, 6 minus 1 so if I put that um, I put that there and if I nestle this one onto it it's probably going to give me a collision report it, it, it is um, let's just see we've got three of them in fact uh, that's interesting uh, let me just look at that carefully and make sure I understand it so we got collision point 37 triangle type 4 so that's uh, the grid collision point. Oh, so 37 is um, uh, what have we got 13 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, is that like that one? 0 to 13, 14, 15, 15. Yeah, so that's 37, that's point 37. And it's triangle type 4, which is that one pointing down, I think. Oh no, it's the one pointing up. So it's that yellow triangle pointing up. And it had a collision block triangle data with ah so it's collided with that square there at yes i suppose it has isn't it um doesn't say that point it's that point because the top of that triangle has actually collided with that square block that's part of that that um that pink block that's fallen down so that's the first one then we've got collision data point 23, type 66. So that so 23 is this one here. It's the solid square, and it's collided with triangle pointy down type 2. Is that that one? Yeah, that's that pink one. And then we've got 37 again, which has collided with triangle type 4 block triangle 2. Which one's that then? Is that half of that? So collision point 37. 37 I mean. 
Oh, no, no, 37 is in that cell there, isn't it? Yes, some complex collisions going on there. <laughs> um, anyway, multiple collisions. So I, d but they're slope collisions. I think it's that one collided with that one, that one collided with that one, and that one collided with that one. But it, they shouldn't cause a break at that point. Because everything slots together nicely. So where are we? We're four o'clock. Um, oh, hi, Shadow1356. Good to see you. Um, I've just discovered my uh, somewhat more complex scenario of collisions can occur multiple points on the grid when blocks of different shapes land. Um, I've got to unpick that somehow. I think I might not do it today. Um, I might just document my discovery here and um, make sure I can think a bit about it in my next stream. Oh, yes, that's, that, that reminds me. My next uh, streams following on from this week are not going to be Thursday afternoon at 3 o'clock. Um, I'm starting a new job, so I'll be busy during the day. So my stream on Tuesday evening at 8 o'clock is still fine. Um, and I'm going to shift this Thursday evening one, or Thursday afternoon one, to probably 8 o'clock as well. Um, but at some point in the future, it might be earlier than that, maybe 6 o'clock. Um, we'll see. So to start with, it'll be 8, 8 o'clock. Um, so both my streams are going to be 8 p.m. UK time. I uh, hope that doesn't cause anybody to stop watching or make it really awkward. Um, but I, I won't be able to do it during the daytime anymore uh, like I have been doing. Um, it's going to be interesting because the evening streams, I'm always quite tired. And I'm going to be especially tired after working a full day's job uh, with commuting. But um, I want to carry on doing this particular project. I certainly want to see it through uh, the long term. Anyway. I shall make a note of that on the various uh, web pages and the change the schedule as well on, on Live Radio TV. So, complex collision scenario. So, let's just make a note in here that. So, um, use aq dot is square cell to test the collision points. Um, for the appropriate pro appropriate triangle against a uh, flat section collisions that should result in a breaking in breaking. Now go back and correct my spelling. Uh, should uh, use aq dot square cell to te oh, um, and and the uh, triangle numbers to test the collision points for the appropriate triangle against flat section collisions that should result in breaking. Um, note this isn't necessarily a simple scenario. Um, since multiple collision points can be reported uh, by the block. I should list the uh, specific specifics for breaking. But I need to draw diagrams for that. I might be better off just making a picture. Um, do I want to bother with ASCII art? <laughs> Let's go back and open up block. So I've got my little ASCII arts here. Uh, I could. Potentially do something like this, couldn't I? Yeah, it's going to be a lot of points. Um, of course, there's another scenario as well, or a couple of other scenarios where it's not always landing on a flat bit. There's a potential for a break to occur if a pointy block or pointy triangle pointing down lands on the tip of a triangle pointing up, but can't slide off it. So, for example, if, point, if triangle type 2 landed on type 1, in theory, it should either slide off to the left or the right. Um, but if it can't, because of other blocks 
blocking it, <laughs> then it should break. So there's definitely a number of scenario types to take into account here. So I'm not going to do that now. I'm going <laughs> to I'll let that mull, I'll mull that over until next time. Um, let's make a note of what I have done. Oh, and that's also uh, self-defined but never used. Yeah, I'll leave those in there for now because that gives me a handy reference as to where I was, and I will also update my refactor with today's 23rd of March ongoing. So stack clustering and grouping, I'm pretty comfortable with I've done. Reorganize the make block code so it actually makes a real block object when combined grid data. I did that I, I did that off stream because it was just a bit of refactoring. Um, and I, I went over that. Refactor the flood field to remove copy pasted blocks of code. I did that as well. Um, so stack clustering grouping I'm pretty sure is done. Although actually I'm going to leave it there because block breaking is part of it. Um, so implement in the block breaking. See grid dot break block method. See the grid dot break block break block method. <laughs> it's quite a tongue twister that one. Um, and see the grid dot break break block method. <laughs> And use the block dot collision points data, and still a sliding bug to do. Right, let's commit this. Smart git. So what do I? Oh, uh, let's just make sure my game minus one zero. Yep. So that's in game. Uh, globals. I added my is square cell function block collision reporting so this was to make sure that the collisions reported are correct because there are certain so what I had to do was change the collision reporting function so it doesn't always report collisions within the block object itself uh, because the, sometimes the collision routine is called speculatively to see if the collision should occur if the block moves somewhere um, and that, that's only a sort of a pre-collision test. Um, what was happening was the collision data was getting reported when there wasn't a collision, really. So we can turn it on and off. And then inside grid, most of the work, fiddling around with the, um, the collision functions. Right. So let's commit that. So I'm going to commit that and push to GitHub. It should go any second now. Great, it's gone. Um, excellent. Thanks very much for watching today. Much appreciated. Uh, uh, Felix22 and USB Shanks, you're hanging around for a little while there. Um, I will see you next time in the evening on next Tuesday. Uh, and hopefully I'll have fixed my hat by then as well. Um, so it's working again. I thought I'd still wear it today even though it wasn't working because I've got used to wearing it. And it also allows me to have a bad hair day and... Uh, <laughs> Not, mad, not worry too much about live streaming in, in front of people. Anyway, thanks very much indeed, and I shall jump back to my splash screen and see you soon.